While we're on the topic of complex numbers, it's worth going down a little side road here and saying a few things about Gauss. Carl Friedrich Gauss. Here's a picture of him. This guy is considered by many people to be the greatest mathematician in the history of the world. And that is saying something. This guy is a more capable mathematician than Archimedes or Einstein or Isaac Newton or Euler, I mean, some really big names in this list, but he would be at the top of the list. And you might not have heard of him before, and that's probably because most of the stuff he did is really pretty advanced. If you study some advanced mathematics or physics, you really run into him a lot. His name is on a huge number of theories in both math and physics, and he did a lot of work with complex numbers. And given that he's the greatest mathematician who ever walked the face of the earth, I think it's worth asking what he said about this topic. And there's a lot of stories about Gauss. He was a child prodigy. He was able to stump his teachers on a lot of things or able to come up with things that they had not thought of before. Um, that's just the way it goes when you have the smartest kid in the world in your classroom. But he would sometimes frustrate them with his superior abilities. But he... Um, he did this work for his his this work on complex numbers and on the fundamental theorem of algebra for his his PhD dissertation. The term PhD, the PH there stands for philosophy and the D stands for doctor, doctor of philosophy. That's just simply the pretty much the most advanced degree you typically get. You do your undergraduate degree in 4 years of college. And then you might go do three or four more years and get a master's degree and then do uh, further work and get a Ph.D. And, and the master's degree, as the name implies, uh, means that you have a certain, a certain level of mastery in the field. And the Ph.D. means typically that you have contributed something new to the field. So if you, get, if you do a Ph.D., you do some original research. You figure something out or study something that hasn't been studied before. Like say if you're doing a PhD in history, you might find some museums and go through some old documents that nobody studied before. Or if you're doing a PhD work, doing PhD work in archaeology, you might uh, be, be uh, doing a, an excavation or something in some place that nobody's done this before or studied. If you're doing a PhD in math, you're going to be coming up with something new, contributing something new to the field. And you spend, you do all this coursework and then you spend a year or so working on this original contribution to the field and when it, and when you're done you go before all of the the top uh, the top authorities in that field at the university and you have to defend your thesis this big paper that you've been working on called your thesis or your dissertation you have to defend that in front of the people who already know as much pretty much as much as you can know about this field and this defense of your dissertation is is the final step in getting your PhD well Gauss Gauss did this work on the fundamental theorem of algebra and this work with complex numbers for his PhD thesis and he defended his thesis in 1799 and he got some criticism for it in his defense some people uh, attacked some of his proofs as not being rigorous enough and he was really stung by that criticism and he went back and continued to work on this topic in dealing with complex numbers for another 50 years. And in, in 1849, he produced another proof of his fundamental theorem of algebra that is still considered rigorous by today's standards. But this topic of complex numbers and complex numbers being the numbers that are adequate to solve algebraic equations. That topic Gauss considered worth spending 50 years studying. So I think it's worth talking about. Most math books that I've read don't develop it in this way or talk about it very much, but I'm going to talk about it. If Gauss, the greatest mathematician in the history of the world, thought it was worth spending 50 years of his life on, then we're going to at least take a few minutes and talk about it here. Basically, Gauss's work in algebra, and specifically with the fundamental theorem of algebra, says that algebraic equations will have solutions in the, in the field of complex numbers, or the set of complex numbers, and that we don't have to go beyond that. That if we start with the counting numbers and then expand to the whole numbers and the integers and the rational and irrational numbers, and then to the complex numbers, that's as far as we have to go. We don't have to expand our field of numbers any further. The complex numbers are going to be adequate to the task. I'll say one other thing about Gauss here, too. 
Um, I mentioned that when he was defending his doctoral dissertation, that he got, got some criticism for the, the proof not being rigorous enough. Well, he really took that to heart. And throughout the rest of his life, when he was working on his, um, his theories, and he worked on a lot of other things too now, not just the fundamental theorem of algebra, but whenever he was working on these ideas, he would not release these ideas to the public unless he was very, very confident that his arguments would stand up to scrutiny. So he held himself to a very high standard of rigor. And one of the results of that was he produced a lot of material that he wasn't, didn't quite feel was ready for publication. And after he died, people looked through his work, and that's typical when, it, when someone who's a real genius like this dies, uh, people will then go through his documents and see if they can find something of worth, because there's often valuable stuff in there from someone who's as brilliant as this. And when they dug through his papers after his death, they found a tremendous amount of material that he just didn't consider worthy of publication, but which was really, really very valuable. And some people have said that just his unpublished works would have advanced the field of mathematics by 50 years if he had published them during his lifetime. And that's just really a stunning thing to think about, that the things that he didn't even consider worthy of publication the rest of the mathematicians in the entire global community of mathematicians took, took them 50 years to figure out just the stuff that he was going to discard. And that's just one example of many of why he was considered to be so brilliant and why he's worth listening to, especially on this topic, which is why I bring him up at this point.